Hi, it's Wynn, and welcome to another educational video by The Entropy System. Today, we will be doing the third installment of our DID in Media video series. In this series, I take a look at different movies and TV shows that explore the phenomena of multiple personalities and assess them based on four basic criteria. One, does it communicate proper diagnosis and treatment? Two, does it address the reason why DID is created, being, of course, childhood trauma? Three, are the alters depicted as part of a unit or are they shown as extra on top of a central personality? And four, is the character relatable? Because in my opinion, one of the most important parts of positive representation is having a character that people like. The movies we'll be looking at today are Six Souls, the Three Faces of Eve, What If It Works, and Sybil. Since I'll be doing an in-depth review, spoiler warning for all four of these films. First, Six Souls. Six Souls is a horror mystery that was released in 2010 under the name Shelter and re-released as Six Souls in 2013. It stars Julianne Moore as Kara Harding, a no-nonsense forensic psychologist who is hard-pressed to believe anything she can't explain immediately. She also seems to have a terrible understanding of what DID is. All the psychology aspects of this movie are bunched up towards the front, because about halfway through we find out that this person doesn't actually have DID, they're all ghosts in the same body. Woo! I'll still be referring to him as the character with DID and the ghosts as alters, just for ease of explanation for the rest of my points. The movie opens with Kara Harding a part of a trial as an expert opinion to help determine the fate of a convicted murderer. The person who she is speaking about committed murder, but is thought to have DID. And she explains that he does not have DID because he was fully aware of the murderous alter's behaviors and therefore should be sent to jail. And just in those omitting moments, we already have have so much misinformation. First of all, having awareness of what an alter is doing does not in any way illegitimize a person's DID. In fact, being able to share consciousness and awareness in that way is how someone with DID is able to live a functional life with their system. And the second point that bothered me, system responsibility means that the whole system has to own each other's actions. If a person is a murderer, whether they have DID or not, they should still go to jail because even if only one of the personalities is committing these crimes, that's still a person committing the crimes. So I don't agree with Kara's point on that either. About a third of the way through the film, Kara is assessing her patient Adam's personalities and realizes that they have the names and personality traits of people who were murdered during Adam's lifetime. She sits down with her father, who is also a psychiatrist, and asks him if he knows how to tell the difference between an actual alternate personality and a delusional one. She then goes on to say that if a personality takes on the names and traits of someone who is outside of the body, that they're a delusional personality and cannot be associated with legitimate DID. Having an alter that's based off of someone that the system has met in real life, or a celebrity, or a historical figure, or even a fictional character like Leto in my system, is actually incredibly common among people with DID. We call these type of alters introjects, and each one of them serves a very specific purpose in the system. After this, it quickly goes on to the creepy, witchy, ghosty stuff, so we're just gonna stop and grade here. Does the movie convey a proper diagnosis and treatment? Not really. It does refer to the disorder as dissociative identity disorder, but it also calls it multiple personality syndrome, which is something I'm finding pops up in a lot of horror films with this type of trope, where are people getting this term from? Multiple personality syndrome is not a real term. I don't know why this keeps coming up. <laughs> also, her description of symptoms is all over the place and nothing close to realistic. Does the movie address why DID is developed? 
Yes and no. They do explore how DID is caused by childhood trauma, but multiple times Dr. Harding talks about how personalities can also be formed as the result of delusion, which of course is not true. Are alters viewed as part of a unit or are they viewed as extra? In this movie, they're viewed as extra. This is most poignantly demonstrated when it is preached that alters cannot be aware of each other's actions. You cannot be a part of a single unit if you're divided in such a way. Also, Dr. Harding only views one of the personalities named Adam as one of her patients and is annoyed when her father introduces her to a different personality first, since that personality isn't her actual patient. Is the character relatable? Sort of? Even though the movie goes above and beyond from the very first moment we meet Adam to make us afraid of him simply because he has multiple personalities, Personalities. His personalities are still actually pretty well-rounded. Even the gruff ones seem like actual people. Hey, mommy, turn off your fountain. Did I turn off your fountain for the video? I'm so sorry, your fountain's too loud. Oh, don't eat it. Okay, I'll plug it in real quick. I apologize for the trickling noises in the background. Eliza was very upset at me for unplugging her little fountain uh, for the video. So we'll just keep that going. Getting back to the topic, is Six Souls a good representation of DID? No, no it is not. The next film is Three Faces of Eve. Three Faces of Eve is a mystery drama that came out in 1957 and tells the true story of Chris Costner Sizemore, who at the time was known as Eve White to protect her identity. I don't know how accurate this movie is to Eve White's actual story because I did not read the book that the movie was based on, so I'm going to be going just off what the film shows. The movie opens on the still of a large angry face and scary me music. Then a narrator tells us that this is the terrifying true tale of Eve White and her multiple personalities. From these first moments, I did not have high hopes about what the rest of the movie would bring. Shortly after that point, we meet Eve White's alternate personality, Eve Black, and the first thing that she does is try to strangle Eve White's daughter. So now we have the tale being described as terrifying and what appears to be an evil altar. However, after this moment in the film, things get a lot better very quickly. Eve goes to a psychologist who she respects and he gets to know both Eve White and Eve Black. From the first moment, the psychologist doesn't treat either personality as more real than the other and he respects them both as individuals. He works hard to help both Eves feel validated in their life choices and communicate with one another. But not only does the doctor view both of these personalities as full people, people, the viewers get to see that too through the storytelling of the movie. Both Eve White and Eve Black are shown as three-dimensional people with their own flaws and aspirations and hopes and fears. When the third personality, Jane, is formed later in the movie, even though she's a brand new personality, she gets the same treatment as the other two. The cool thing about Jane being in the film is that it brings light to the fact that alters can be formed in a adult years if a person already has DID as the result of stress and not necessarily just trauma. Even though the climax of the film is focused on the recovery of repressed trauma memories, the plot as a whole doesn't really focus on that at all. Instead, it focuses on how each of the three alters lives and each struggles to find fulfillment in their own way because of DID. So let's grade. Does the movie convey a proper diagnosis and treatment? Yes, it's called multiple personality disorder in this movie, but in the 1950s, multiple personality disorder is what it was called. So it's actually correct here. And even though they talk about total integration being the only path to healing, which was the belief at the time, they still focus more on system cooperation and communication than they do on actually trying to force anyone to merge together. Does the movie address why DID is developed? 
Yes, the climax of the film focuses on one moment. However, they do also make references to severe punishments that she used to receive for misbehaving. So they do address the requirement of repeated childhood trauma. Are the alters a part of a team or are they extra? In this movie, they are highlighted fantastically as part of a team. This to me is shown best during the integration scene. By having the other two integrate into Jane, it shows just how real all three of these personalities were. It doesn't matter if an altar is new or has been around since the body existed. Any one of them can take charge of outside living and have others integrate into them. Finally, is the character relatable? Honestly, they really are. Except for the one scene where we see Eve Black trying to strangle a little girl with a curtain cord, they're all shown as very well-rounded, believable, sympathetic people. And we're cheering them all on during the whole film, wanting the best for each of them. So is Three Faces of Eve a good representation of DID? Yes, absolutely it is. The next movie is What If It Works, a romance drama released in 2017. In this movie, we have Adrian, a man with OCD, and Grace, a woman with DID, meeting each other and falling in love through a series of cute little mishaps. I'm a sucker for quirky romances like this, but just knowing how Hollywood treats mental disorders had me a little nervous going in. And within the first few minutes, the bar was put so low. The first character we meet is Adrian, the man with obsessive compulsive disorder, and we find out that he's going through a divorce because his OCD was so debilitating that his wife simply couldn't be with him anymore. Now, I don't know a ton about OCD, so I'm not going to fixate on these points of the film too much because I don't feel qualified to speak to it, but I feel like the OCD in this movie was so overblown. I did read an interview of the writer and director of this film, Rami Trower, and she said that her brother has a similarly debilitating case of OCD and that she wanted to tell a story about a guy like him. So some of the things, like living every moment of his day wearing the same pair of gloves, holding his hands in front of him to ensure that he doesn't accidentally touch something germy, Maybe that is something that her brother did, so I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. However, there's one scene very early on that just made me mad. <laughs> one of Adrian's rituals is washing things in soapy water. So when he parks his car at one point, he starts throwing buckets of sudsy water into the car and in onto the engine, completely flooding it. Then he immediately gets into the car, tries to start it, and is confused of why his car won't start. Now, I understand that rituals can fly in the face of logic and that maybe even though he knew he was damaging his car, he was still doing the soap sud thing anyway. But the man has a PhD in engineering and is a tech genius. Even if he was caught up in this ritual, he wouldn't be confused why the car didn't start. He has OCD. He's not an idiot. If someone's watching this with OCD and thought that this movie was actually a good representation, please let me know so I can feel better about the film in general. But just with the way they were highlighting things as, that's so quirky, I feel like it's probably not. But we're here to talk about DID, so let's move on to Grace. After all that stuff with Adrian, when we first met Grace and her system, I had no hopes for proper representation. At one point, Adrian is meeting with his therapist, who happens to also be Grace's therapist, and Grace's alter G, who is a hypersexual alter, bursts into the room, thinks Adrian is the therapist, and ends up just talking about every man she's ever had sex with while also coming on to him. At this point, I'm thinking, oh my god, this is going to be a long film. But then things got better. Like, way, way better. Not with the OCD stuff, that's all on the same level, but with the DID, it's actually fantastically well done. The plot goes that the alter G is in a relationship with a street artist named Sledgehammer, and they are working together to create pieces for an art opening that Sledge is hosting. Sledge, of course, does not know about G's multiple personalities. Surprise, surprise, Sledge is actually a terrible human being, and Adrian's ex-wife is also a crap human, so they struggle to get away from their toxic relationships and find peace 
and understanding with one another. The whole movie culminates as Adrian gets to feel sort of like a superhero because he's able to break out of one of his rituals to save G from Sledgehammer, who is becoming violent and probably about to do something really bad to her. So let's great. Does the movie convey proper diagnosis and treatment? No, unfortunately it does not. The movie only calls it multiple personality disorder, which it came out in 2017. We renamed the disorder in the 90s, people. Why is the world not caught up yet? Diagnosis aside, they do get treatment done pretty well. In therapy, they talk about wanting to achieve integration in the future, but in the meantime, they work on how best to live a life together as a system by working as a team. Does the movie address the reason why DID is developed? Yes, it does. The thing I love about this movie is that it addresses that terrible trauma happened in Grace's childhood, but it doesn't go into graphic detail about anything. We just understand what she's sort of hinting at, and we don't need a graphic reliving or retelling of what happened. This is the first time I've seen a movie that claimed to represent this disorder and handled trauma in this way and I love it. Are the altars portrayed as part of a team or are they extra? The altars in this system are definitely a team. They all work together to make sure that they can work the same job, support the same passions, live in the same relationship, and just make life as safe as possible for one another. They're a team, even though they don't always see eye to eye, they try to support one another. There's also never a feeling of, well, I'm not them, so I don't have to abide by these rules. Finally, is the character relatable? Absolutely. Every single altar in this system is well-rounded and believable. Even the aggressive altar Spike or the hypersexual altar G is still shown as realistic and human. No altar is shown as being diminished to just a specific quirk or a problem for the rest of the system to solve. They all feel like real people. Before I give it the final thumbs up or thumbs down, I just want to talk about some other things that this movie addressed that I loved. There's a whole scene where Grace talks about her inner world. There's so much symbolism in what she's saying, which is very true for a lot of inner worlds. There is a lot of symbolism that goes into building inner worlds. And the way she talks about disjointed ways of communicating in the inner world feels very real. They also show a lot of switches in this movie, but none of them are overblown. Sometimes she'll pause and then a switch will happen. And sometimes she won't even blink. It'll just be a change in posture or in vocal intonation, something that that someone who wasn't looking for DID probably wouldn't be able to notice. So many films show switches as these big, drawn out, overblown things, which they can be for some systems, but I know in my experience, they're almost always subtle and completely unnoticeable. So seeing that reflected in a movie was thrilling to me. So you already know what I'm about to say, but is What If It Works a good representation of DID? Yes, it absolutely is. This is my absolute favorite representation of DID that I have ever seen, but I cannot in good conscience recommend this film to anyone because the OCD is portrayed in what seems like such a stigmatized way. I don't know how they could have possibly gotten one disorder so right and one disorder so miserably wrong. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Sybil. Now, the one that I watched is the 2007 version of Sybil starring Jessica Lange and Tammy Blanchard. I could not find any way to watch the original Sybil other than actually just buying a used copy of the DVDs off of Amazon. And I wasn't ready for that level of commitment to this movie. So 2007 Sybil it is. This movie claims to be a retelling of the true story of Sybil and her psychiatrist, Dr. Wilbur. Sybil is sent to Dr. Wilbur at the beginning of the film because she seeks help from a male doctor and he thinks that her symptoms are just hysteria, something he sees as a woman's issue. So he passes her along to his female colleague to diagnose the woman 
woman thing. Very quickly, Dr. Wilbur realizes that Sybil it does not have hysteria at all, but rather multiple personalities that she is unable to connect with. Dr. Wilbur then makes it her mission to help Sybil connect with all the personalities in her system and also uncover the trauma that caused these personalities to exist in the first place. I'm not sure how the original film handled it, but this movie focuses more on Dr. Wilbur's journey than it does Sybil's. So we only really get to see Sybil's experiences through the tiny snapshots of her appointments with Dr. Wilbur. Meanwhile, it uses its extra time to show Dr. Wilbur struggling to be respected in her field and trying desperately to come up with a diagnosis for Sybil's condition because for whatever reason, the movie wants us to believe that there is no diagnosis yet. This, of course, is absolutely incorrect. Multiple personality disorder was first an official diagnosis in the 1880s. It did not become a thing that was added to the DSM after Sybil. For a movie trying to tell a true story, that's a big ol' lie to put on top. We get into Sybil's backstory very quickly and are shown constant graphic flashbacks of the horrendous things that her mother would do to her. We're also introduced to a new altar every few minutes almost, and it all seems very rushed and poorly timed. Because it all goes so fast, we don't really get to connect or with any of her alters or see them as well-rounded, understandable human beings. And instead, it just looks like, oh man, she could switch at any time. Oh look, she's peeing on the floor. What's gonna happen next? At the end of the movie, Dr. Wilbur takes Sybil to her vacation home in order to help her start to really recover from her DID. While there, she hypnotizes Sybil and helps every single alter achieve the same age because they believe that that's a key part to healing for some reason. And then everything rises to a crescendo as the personality Sybil finally admits that she hates her mother and stops trying to protect her or explain away her terrible behavior. So let's great. Does the movie convey a proper diagnosis and treatment? Yes, kind of. It gives her the diagnosis of multiple personality disorder, but it pretends that this diagnosis is brand new and didn't exist before Sybil's case. And although Dr. Wilbur wants Sybil to be able to connect with her personalities, Dr. Wilbur seems more interested in figuring out all the details of the trauma than actually helping the system work together as a unit, and then just tries to force integration later on. Does the movie address why DID is developed? Yes, it does time and time again in excruciating detail. Are the altars a part of a unit or are they extra? For the most part, the altars are shown as part of a unit. We do get tiny snippets of each of them trying to live a happy, fulfilling life on the outside, and Dr. Wilbur only really focuses on Sybil as her patient because Sybil is the only one who doesn't have any communication with the rest of the system. But again, the storytelling is so rushed that we don't get a good look at their system teamwork or relationship much at all before we're thrown into another flashback. Lastly, is the character relatable? Sort of? There are signs that all of the personalities in the system have good in them and, and are sincerely trying their best, but they focus so much on the shocking aspects of alter behavior and on the trauma itself, we only get to see Sybil and her system in the direct context of response to trauma and don't get much of anything outside of that. It's hard to relate to someone if you only see them at their very worst. So. Is this movie a good representation of DID? No. Even though this one is supposedly based on a true story, they frame everything to just scare and shock people, and that is not the kind of representation that we need. We've got enough actual horror movies doing that for us already. But what about your thoughts? Do you Have you seen any of these movies? Do you agree or disagree with any of my assessments? Let me know in the description below. And if you have any recommendations for movies or TV shows that portray multiple personalities that you'd like me to review in a future video, also let me know below. I've gotten a lot of recommendations for books and unfortunately I don't have the free time to dive into a bunch of novels to assess their characters, so we're sticking strictly to movies and TV shows. Thank you everyone for watching and an extra big thank you to Menagerie and all of our patrons for helping to support our channel. If you're interested in becoming a patron, a link to our page is in the description below. If you're interested in sending us fan mail, our P.O. box address is also in the description below. Please don't forget to like, comment, 
comment and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Bye!